lodged a complaint against you. They even have a tape recording to back up their charges. What? Yes, and, and Carpenter's name was mentioned, Charles too. Carpenter. This is a scam. You're just trying to set me up for something. <laughs> Why would I do a thing like that with someone as small time as you? Well, I just want to give you a little friendly advice. You've never done anything friendly in your life. Yeah, don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks. You know what your trouble is? You're short-sighted. Yeah, you want everything right now. And what makes it worse is you think you deserve it right now. So you reach out for anything that's within your grasp. That's very small and very petty. Your short reach brings very short rewards. It hastens your downfall. I'm actually sitting here with you. Marsha, that's my friend. She doesn't care if you are BMOC. You're definitely TCFW. TCFW? Too cute for words. Oh, uh, and the other one, BC? BMOC. BMOC. Big man on campus, of course. Of course. Uh, you don't think I'm too forward, do you? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Uh, I think you're uh, CBB. Cute beyond belief. Wow. Thanks. As a matter of fact, you remind me of a couple of freshmen I once knew. Redhead and a brunette. Really? Really. So, how come you know so much about me? Easy, silly. The football handbook. <gasps> the football handbook. And do you usually sit around checking vinyl statistics and then pick up on men? I... no. It's usually the other way around. Now that I can believe. I'm sorry if I bothered you. Hey, hey, hey. Don't go away, man. Don't go away at all. Really? Really. I think Marsha's right. And I think Marsha has cute friends. Uh, so what's your major? Archaeology, economics, poli-sci. I guess I don't really know yet. I mean, who can decide with so much other stuff to do? Mm -hmm. Marsha says that classes aren't important freshman year anyway. Senior year either, if you work it right. No kidding? What I kid you. I hope not. Anyway, with Greek week coming up and uh, then spring rush, who can study? Don't tell me. Row cap of I? Right. How'd you know? Oh, um, something in your eyes. What are my eyes saying right now? That you row cap of eyes really have your priorities straight. <clears throat> of course, uh, Dr. Burian wouldn't agree with that. Are you sick? No, no. Uh, Dr. Burian is my... my anatomy teacher. Oh. Of course, you could probably show him a thing or two. Well, I hope to see you around. Sheila. Don't worry, Russ Weaver. You will. When we went to pick up Nancy Lawson and take her to jail, that kid that was with her, he seemed to know you. No, Elliot. Right. <laughs> well, in a manner of speaking, he played a very interesting role in uh, Miriam Mason's lawsuit against Laurie Davidson. I see. Yeah, but he's no kid. Boy, he's been involved in more shady deals than a, le a lemonade stand under an oak tree. Uh, there's uh, black market activity in Vietnam, subordination of perjury, even aggravated assault. Oh? Yeah, a very unfortunate incident involving Laurie's roommate. Would you say that this Elliot uh, is the type that has a tendency toward violence? I would say so, yes. What are you up to, John? Well, I really can't say. I'm just checking out an accusation against Elliot, but... Uh... I can tell you that everything that you've told me agrees with this person's suspicions. Who? <laughs> a very unlikely source. And that's all you're going to get out of me. Well, unlike a certain detective that I could mention, I've never tried to get information out of someone in an unpropitious way. Right, and all the politicians that I know always tell the truth. Now, I think I've got enough evidence on this guy, Elliot, to put him away, but I just want to sew him up a little tighter. Tell me about it. 
Elliot is as slippery as a grease pig and twice as ornery. But keep after him, because you're going to find out that he's not as tough as he likes to think he is. Thanks for your help, Mitch. Any time, John. Oh, by the way, how was your date with my mother? Wonderful. It's the same word she used. <laughs> I keep you waiting so long, Vince. No, don't give it a second thought. The price I pay for making unannounced visits. I'm have to give you a schedule of my classes. Huh? This belongs to you, unless Becky's calling somebody else, darling. Very funny. Russ, I don't blame you for being upset. Please believe me when I say I was looking forward to some time together. Two, uh, meanwhile, try to hold on to this thought. Oops, what? Taxi's here. Love you, Becky. Well, at least we don't have to worry about birth control. What's this one about? What are they all about? This time she's leaving indefinitely. Interesting word, indefinitely. Rearrange a couple of letters in it, and you can pronounce it indifferently. By you or by her? Oh, good question. Good question. Yeah, you know, this whole situation has gone from bad to worse. I agree. But uh, at least you're upset about it enough to show that you still care. Am I? Sure. And you miss her. Don't yeah. you? Yeah, 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 I do. But you gotta learn that she is not the only fish in the sea. Only fish in the sea. Boy, the line hasn't even changed. Yeah, well, it's true. There's more than one preppy waiting around, willing to help a football player complete a pass. Uh, to be young and on the prowl again. What are you talking about, on the prowl? Hey, well, look, heads turned for me, too, in my day, you know. Well, I'm sure they did, Vince. Well, don't be patronizing. <laughs> Where do you think you got your good looks and your style, anyway? Huh? Trial and error. It's mostly error. <laughs> it's in the blood, I'm telling you, and believe me, neither one of us could compare to your grandfather. Oh, 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 oh was this Tales of the Conquest time? You think it all started with you, don't well, you? Well, you know. Yeah, well, let me tell you what the typical girl is like. She's seen every one of your football games. She knows your statistics better than you do yourself. Oh, yeah. She uh, says, oh, do you mean I'm actually talking to the real Ross Weaver? Yes, and last, but certainly most important, she knows how to say things mm -hmm. with her eyes and her body that most girls waste time trying to put into words. Bravo, Ben. Oh, such a smart aleck. <laughs> okay, and now I guess you're going to tell me about the part about me being a married man, right? Why? Well, because you're supposed to. Well, probably, but I'm not going to. What's wrong with being attracted to some pretty kappa, kappa, whatever? Right. At least uh, your wife doesn't care enough about your needs to take care of them. Oh, uh, come on, Vince. Okay, okay. It's, it's unavoidable that Becky spends so much time away. Oh. You, you, you amaze me sometimes, you know that? Yeah, well, look, it's late. Why don't I amaze you over dinner tonight? Yeah, that might be a good idea. You never know what might happen if some good-looking thing comes knocking at my door wanting to impress me. You know, Russ, it would be easy to satisfy your needs with someone who's willing, but... I know that you would find that to be hardly satisfactory. I knew it. I knew you were going to say that. It's a simple enough question. Do you or do you not want me to continue with the divorce? That's too hard to answer, Mitch. Oh, you've got more riddles than a sphinx. What's so hard about yes or no? Because there are a lot of maybes in there, too. You know, if you give answers like that in court, the judge is going to take that boy away from you both and give him to someone who's sane. The truth of the matter is that Carl and I have been getting along. And we've been treating each other civil lately, too. And? Well, I, I mean, that's a good start. After all, you're the one that wanted us to talk, right? Well, yes. But exactly what did you talk about? Just some things. Things. Mitch, what do you want, a transcript? No, approximation will do. Okay, so we talked about the past two years mm -hmm. and the way it was before Carla left and what went wrong. And anywhere in there did either one of you mention what things are going to be like? Not yet, but it's getting there. When? 
when the time is right. Mitch, now can we just enjoy the here and now with as little friction as possible? I mean... No. So why not? It's not realistic. Why, your here and now can go right out the window. For one of any number of reasons. <laughs> and then what's going to happen? You're going to be right back where you started. Mitch, I'm... I can't let you start with the divorce proceedings again. I and can't. And you refuse to proceed with the reconciliation. Look, Jean, it may seem very pleasant, but this limbo of yours isn't doing anybody any good, especially Jimmy. Don't confuse progress. We're standing still, Jean. I think the object is to take off as little below the skin as possible. It's this peeler. Keeps taking out big chunks. Uh-huh. It does. <laughs> These little black things get in here, and you have to try to dig them out. Right, Jimmy, right. Mm -hmm. Dad, when's Mom going to move back in with us? Mm -hmm. See, your peeler does the same thing. Does not. I just slipped. Hey, Jimmy, look, I know your Mom and I have been getting along pretty good, but we have to, you know, we have to wait. We can't rush things. Why not? Because things wouldn't work out as well, you know, unless we waited. What? Well, look, let's say that you're a goalie on a soccer team. I hate soccer. All right, well, then we'll say that you're a pitcher on a baseball team. I'm a first baseman. Jimmy. Okay, all right. Now, your team is winning by one run. Now, the bases are loaded. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. There are two outs. The batter has two strikes and three balls against him. I'd quit. You can't quit. This is my story, son. All right? All right, now you've got this pitch that you haven't been practiced on that much. We'll say that it's a knuckleball, okay? And when it's good, it's great, but when it's bad, it really stinks. Dad, how can you always talk about pitchers instead of basemen? They J count too, you know. Jimmy, that's not that important, okay? Sorry. Thank you. Now, you try and convince the coach to let you throw this knuckleball, but he says that you haven't practiced on it enough. But the two of you argue back and forth and back and forth until finally he says, all right, he'll let you try. So what you do, you grip that ball and you go into a slow wind-up until you, wham, you release it. But because you haven't practiced it enough, I mean, it's the dumbest, the stupidest knuckleball that anyone has ever thrown any place. And then smack, the batter knocks it over the fence for a home run and you lose. And you see, if your mother and I wait to see how things go before we decide to get back together again, well, then the chances are that much better that things will work out than if we rushed it. Well, I think you and Mom are getting back together. Jimmy, look. Grandma said you two took a step in the right direction. Oh, she did, did she? I don't know who they hope to fool by trying to substitute Testron to cut corners. Charles Carpenter and Harold Webster. Yeah, they used to work under different names, but Curly died. <laughs> well, what'd you do? I pulled rank on them. Not hard to do, admittedly, but it's tiresome. I talked to the builder myself. Jason Prescott. You don't like him? We've had our differences. Well, resolve them. Prescott is a good man. Now, as of right now, you, Prescott, and I are a team. And believe me, it's going to be all we can do to keep our economy-minded friends in line. Charles Carpenter. You know, if someone removed his conscience, it would be a minor operation. <laughs> yes? Send him in. I think first thing in the morning, I'll send someone over to the mall site to make sure that Charles didn't have some testron delivered by mistake. That's a good idea. Commissioner, sorry to disturb you. Uh, Detective Brubaker, this is a, a, a business acquaintance of mine. I'm sure you don't mind if he stays. No, no, I don't mind at all. As a matter of fact, I'll be brief. I'm looking for Norman Elliott. I believe he works for you. Yes, he's one of my assistants. Frankly, I was a little surprised to find him on a county payroll, especially under your employee. Oh, why? Well, he's not exactly your model government employee. Dishonorable discharge from the service, several arrests. Shall I go on? No, no, no. I'm familiar with it. As a, as a public servant, John, I feel it's my obligation whenever possible to hire the disadvantaged. 
Well, that's uh, very admirable, Commissioner. Uh, no other motives, I'm sure. Why do you want to see Norman? Well, there's been a complaint filed against him. I just want to ask him a couple of questions. Well, he's a, a busy man. He keeps irregular hours, but uh, I'll contact him and tell him that uh, you'd like to get in touch with him, if you'd like. Well, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Good afternoon. Norman Elliott. I'm disappointed in you. There's an old saying, George, you get what you pay for. Where do you know him from? A former associate of mine hired him once. He proved to be an acute embarrassment. He's done an admirable job for me. Well, as a re direct result of Norman's blundering, my former associate is now serving time. If I were you, as quickly and discreetly as I could, I'd call everybody I knew in the police department and find out what this is all about. Because if Norman Elliott is caught, and if he can finger you for anything, believe me, he'll do it. Uh, hi. Hi. Do you remember me? Well, you remember Grant? What? Of course I remember you. Oh, you were just going out. No, 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 no. I was, it, was, it just got kind of cool in here. Seems warm now. Yeah, definitely. Bet you're wondering why I'm here, or even how I found you. Yeah, well, the thought did occur to me. Hey, but why be nosy, right? You are silly. That's me, silly Russ Weaver. Well, this is why I'm here. And as to how I found you, you'll never guess who works in the registrar's office. Good old Marcia. That's right. And so it, when you left that at the huddle, I said to myself, Sheila, Russ needs an important book like that, so you better try to get it to him. Well, I'll tell you, Sheila, Russ did need it for his biology lab this afternoon. I'm sorry. At least you have it now, right? Right. Wow. Is this place neat or what? Yeah, it's uh, neat, all right. You know, wasn't even sure if I had the correct address. The mailbox said Hewitt or something on it. Who's that? Ah, uh, Hewitt. That's, um, I guess it's the people who used to live here. I just haven't gotten around to get the box changed yet. You should. I mean, it's really confusing and everything. I almost didn't ring the doorbell. Then where would you have been? Certainly without my biology book. Well. Well. Uh. Look, Sheila. I really was just on my way out. Sure, I understand. No, it's just that I have to get dinner with a friend of mine tonight, that's all. Well, hey, I'm really sorry. Well, bye. Bye. Sheila. Yes? Um, uh, <laughs> there's really something that um, you ought to know. I'm really busy tonight, so why don't we just look for each other at the huddle, okay? Great. I'll see you there. Okay. Commissioner, I thought you'd gone home. Then you have no business being in my office. Vince. I mean, Mr. Cardello. Hello, Norman. What are you doing here? Isn't that a question I should be asking you? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, well? Um, I just came to use the phone. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it can wait. Norman, yeah. tell me, what is it that George uses you for? Well, I handles some of the delicate issues for him. Stuff that takes a steady hand and a, and a cool head. Actually, he, uh, he considers me indispensable. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. You know, your name came up in a funny context this afternoon. Yeah? Yes, a Detective Brubaker was here asking questions about you. I see that comes as a surprise to you. Oh, no, no, I've dealt with him before. Uh-huh. Well, George checked things out. It seems that 
Somebody has lodged a complaint against you. They even have a tape recording to back up their charges. What? Yes, and, and Carpenter's name was mentioned, Charles too. Carpenter. The one and only. This is crazy. I don't think so. D did they say anything else? No. This is a scam. You're just trying to set me up for something. <laughs> Why would I do a thing like that with someone as small time as you? Oh, I just want to give you a little friendly advice. You've never done anything friendly in your life. Oh, don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks. You know what your trouble is? You're short-sighted. Yeah, you want everything right now. And what makes it worse is you think you deserve it right now. So you reach out for anything that's within your grasp. That's very small and very petty. You're short Reach brings very short rewards, and it hastens your eventual downfall. I've taken care of myself pretty well so far. So far? If I were you, I'd check this thing out. I haven't done anything wrong. That's the cry of many a condemned man. Oh, by the way, Norman, George Slaymaker isn't taking any chances. As of this afternoon, the last hour and a half, he no longer considers you to be indispensable. You've been fired.